Pretty good radar deflector. Look at all the radars we'll be deflecting. So many radars. Have you ever seen that many radars be deflected? <laughs> Alright everybody, here is our balloon, it is latex, so I need, let's say, four volunteers uh, who do not have a latex allergy, please, if you are allergic to latex, do not volunteer. Alright, I'm going to get you, yep, um, you, alright, let's get you and you. Hey Jeremy! What you got there? A balloon? Where's it gonna go? It's going to space. Oh, yeah. On its skin. So we're going to attach this to our hab, which contains experiments in it. It's going to fly. How high is it going to fly, Stefan? Uh, 23 miles. 23 miles. So that's the point at which if you were up there and you had a glass of water, that water would boil from the lack of air pressure, which is kind of crazy to think about. So once it gets up high enough, this thing is going to get super huge. How huge? Like uh, two of your classrooms. And then it's going to pop, and then our hab, which has a parachute, will come back down to the earth. And we will go retrieve it. Everybody got a good view? Make sure you can see it. All right. So here we go in five, four, three, two, one. Your landing box have a transmitter? Yes. No, nope, we just guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got an app right here. Let me pull it up on my phone. We got tracking of sure uh, two it. minutes ago. We're still tracking it. Yeah, Steph and I both have this app, and this app, what it does is it tells us where that transmitter is. That transmitter is connecting to satellites right now, and then we have this app, and we can connect to those same satellites to say, oh yeah, we're getting tracking. So Silver Stratica mine. Yeah. So already, so, just in the five minutes we've watched, it's already made its way over to Stratica. already by this point. What's the farthest that you guys have had a balloon go before? We had a 350 gram balloon that landed um, about 20 miles-ish east of Concordia. So that's like a good two and a half hour drive. Yeah. One and way. Back when we were looking at launching this a week ago, when uh, Dan was here, the projections for it, because there was weather that day, had it going about halfway between Kansas City and Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> what was that? You know, truly Jupiter and Mars get all the attention in the planets sweep, but Saturn, 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 Saturn's got some game, Saturn's got game. His old push and button guy was, uh, was Mr. Krabs. Krabs yeah. yeah. Hey, you're gonna push the button, Desmond. Hey. The, I guess, country in Princess Diaries? Oh, what was it called in Princess Diaries? Genovia. So right here? Yep. Did you catch that? 
I think so. <laughs> there it is. Where? Oh, yeah. Lucky. They could have ended up in that tree. Where's this? Someone's camera. Ah. Let me see. It had a hard landing. The spot's got to be right in here somewhere. The balloon stayed attached. It's supposed to. Right? Yeah. That's why it came down so fast. Oh, because it had the balloon weighing it down. Certified flown above the Armstrong limit. You get the... I say, Why did this has been quite the successful lab recovery. Placement character for Han Solo named Dash Rendar, who's basically just Han Solo but cooler. Really leaning heavily in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. They're like, this one needs to have, each of the worlds has like six levels spread across the one hub world, but they were like, no, 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 Kingdom of the Crystal Skull needs to have like 15 or so levels just so you can really get the full Kingdom of the Crystal Skull experience. Unexpected noise for that. There it is. It sounds well. That sounds like a pop. Yeah. <laughs> At first, it just kind of sounded like a rustling. Noise. Now we're gonna get chaotic. 